All right, the smoke across North America has really put a hamper on things. If you live in North America, how much has it hampered you? So tonight is... Eh, sort of clear, I guess. Uh, astrospheric and clear sky chart and all of them say it's clear, but the smoke is really going to hamper things. But I figured, eh, what the heck, come on and take advantage of it. So tonight, uh, I'm running with the usual setup. It is on screen, so that way you can see what it is. And I'm just gonna put it on the Western Veil Nebula and just let it run and maybe pull out some, some frames here and there that are okay to use. If not, then, well, it was practice. The other thing I wanna do is use my Dobsonian and the cell phone to take an image of Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn is almost at all position. So because of the smoke and the clouds that have been in this region lately, I'm just gonna take advantage of it. It is almost at out positions, like a week or two out. So uh, one thing I did find out that could actually be really helpful if you are planning on doing an image with a Dobsonian and a cell phone is if you have a cell phone mount, attach it during the day and get focused off of something off in the distance. Just like how I mentioned with using the ASI Air and getting your camera focused there. Do kind of the same thing, point it off at a tree in the distance or whatever, and then you can play with the mount and get it lined up. That way after dark, all you have to do is find your target with the daub, so Jupiter, Saturn, the moon, whatever, and from there, swap out the eyepieces and hit record on your phone and you should be good. So. Um, what we're gonna do is tonight, after I get home, I'll process the Jupiter and Saturn pictures. However, if that Veil Nebula one does turn out decent, then it will turn into a guide later. I am learning a little bit of a uh, couple different processing methods, so it'll probably get tossed into one of those. But for now, um, it's not. Now, one thing I do wanna let you guys know about is uh, just for the month of August, I am going to bi-weekly videos and that is because I have a ton of plans. Some of them are, actually most of them are not involving Astro in any way. So just for the month of August, I'm going bi-weekly and then in September we'll go back to weekly. But I just gotta wait for it to get dark and we'll see uh, how the night goes. Well, this has been a fun night already. Uh, I'm on call for work and got called in and um, had to deal with that. So. Uh, as I was coming back in, one of the guys I like to hang out with while doing imaging told me the ISS is passing. So we're going to try something where we attach the DSLR to the daub and see what happens. Well, what a night. So tried uh, for the ISS early, which was kind of a surprise that that was coming through. <laughs> Didn't even think about it. Um, the camera is still running on... Uh, the Western Vale, but I'm about to pack up because we have had some real patchy clouds tonight and uh, It's already covered over the plants before I even got a good chance to do anything with them. So I Guess we'll go home and just see what I got uh, With all the data sometimes we get clouded out and it's kind of a bummer, but you know it is what it is and uh, we'll come back out as soon as it's clear again. All right, so back at home, and I've already messed around with the data that I have, and I toyed around with titling this video something about failing to acquire any data, but I actually don't look at it that way. So one thing about this hobby is that there is a lot of things that influence when you can get data, you know, the weather, wildfires, things like that. So if you get a night that's decently clear, then just run with it. Those are the perfect nights to learn something. So for last night, I ended up doing some practice on capturing the ISS, which was a total surprise to me. And for that, I mean, I got it. <laughs> uh, capturing the ISS with a Dobsonian is actually quite challenging, but it will be something that I'm working on perfecting over time. The other thing that I wanted to do was test out a battery that I had recently got. Amazon Prime Day had one of the Jackery batteries on sale and I didn't have a good battery for going places where there's no power. So I was like, yeah, I'm gonna get it. And I don't regret that purchase. So running the entire setup, the HEQ5 Pro, the ASI Air, both cameras and a dew heater, it got to about 68% after almost four hours, which is pretty decent for that uh, little battery. 
I don't expect it to go multi-night, but for one night, it's perfectly fine. Uh, with the Veil Nebula, I ended up getting about an hour of decently usable data. And that's not an award-winning picture, but it is good practice. And uh, this picture right here is just a quick stretch. So there's no noise reduction, no contrast adjustments, no sharpening, none of that. It's just two quick curve stretches just to see what it looked like. And that is with an hour of data and 20 dark frames. And I think that turned out pretty well for what I got. All in all, it was a successful night uh, with the interruption of cloud smoke and being on call for work. But hey, you take what you can get if you live in an area like I do. Uh, it's very cloudy and very smoky, so I call it a success. Hey, and just, I want to know down in the comments, what are those crazy nights where it, the night itself was kind of cloudy for you, but you still ended up learning something that helped you out later in the long run? Let me know down in the comments below. But hey, if you stuck around uh, throughout the, this whole video, I know it's a little bit different than the other styles of videos I do, but hey, I just had to play around with the clear night and run with what I got. And if you enjoyed this type of video, uh, like, comment, and then maybe consider subscribing. I want to thank you for watching. Clear skies.